शांति सिस्टर मीरा आस्ट मी टू शेयर सम न्यूज एंड टू गिव क्लास यस टुडे द वन थिंग शी फॉर गॉट टू गिव मी वॉज अ टॉपिक but um considering sharing the news of where i've just come from somebody asked me what the topic would be and the first thing that came to my mind this morning was success in service i've just come back from um four days spent in baba's new retreat center in hyderabad those of you hyderabad is in is in andhra pradesh south india not the hyderabad in pakistan um but the hyderabad down and the name of bubs retreat center there is called shanti sarovar um it's a relatively new complex and it's a new thing for that part of india as well and one of the interesting observations about hyderabad there's a section between the old city and the new city that's called cyberabad as in short for cyber city high tech city hmm? hyderabad and bangalore or now known as mangalore are two of the most well known cities in india for high tech you'll find every um known company um to computers and it software under the sun in those two cities and baba's retreat center is very well located in cyberabad and it's right in the heart of the high tech city and so the potential for service in the nearby areas is absolutely tremen- tremendous because right next door to baba's retreat center is um the the head of one of um india and probably asia's biggest uh high tech company infosys and wipro and the interesting thing about these particular companies is that as you go into their buildings which are huge structures they have every possible facilities for their employees to deal with every level of a human being's welfare the physical they have workout gyms they have um rooms for resting relaxation where they have meditation music they have um you know emotional counseling areas everything except the spiritual and one of the interesting developments in hyderabad has been this whole area of now companies coming forward to recognize what it means to address the spiritual element of this and now they're turning towards the brahma kumaris for this and so part of the tour was um going in to these companies and meeting with employees and conducting seminars and not just seminars on just positive thinking and you know our usual um if you like public facing seminars but very much seminars at the heart of what raj yoga meditation is about because there's a tremendous thirst for this um especially in these companies so that was part of the other tour but the other half of of my tour is very much as some of you may know um i i help out in baba's service especially with the youth not only just the young bks we have a forum starting soon on the 25th but also um with young people on a lokic level and so as per that the hyderabad family had arranged a tour of visits to colleges to universities um as well as a one day retreat for their youth and what was so interesting to note is that imagine walking into a classroom well not into a classroom which is a hall about probably about twice the size of this one of the colleges and being met by whistles <laughs> being met by loud cheers being met by students absolutely going crazy for about 10 15 minutes a group of about 800 to 1000 students totally in total chaos and riot and then the magic of baba's 
energy and power. We invited the students to have a moment's silence. And in that silence, it was like total chaos to total silence, total peace. And mostly a lot of these young people were aged between 15 and 25. And one of the things that came out most from our sessions with them is the extremely high level of expectation and pressure that especially young people from an Indian background face today. Often parents in families have extremely high educational expectations of their children. And um, now the highest rate of suicide is within universities um, in this country. And so the pressure to perform and the pressure to achieve is something that dominates especially young people within the Indian culture. Um, yes, it is definitely, there's an element of that in the West as well, but so much so that a level of education is very much linked to honor within the Indian culture and the family. And so if you failed, you failed the family's honor. And this is why a large percentage of suicides happen, not only just on the one level of failing of their own education, because it's highly competitive, um, but also the whole aspect of losing honor within the family. And just to be able to get a chance to share not only my own journey, but also whatever Baba's given us for these young people, um, I saw the effect. Um, it was tremendous, a tremendous response, whereby probably towards the end of my stay, the main head teachers of probably each of the colleges I'd visited had come together to actually start the Raj Yoga meditation course at Shanti Sarova. Shanti Sarova, the, the level of service in Hyderabad is has an extremely Western attitude towards it. Almost all the lectures were in English um, because one of the main languages in South India is Telugu. And after Telugu, they prefer English more than Hindi. So that was rather easy from my part. But it was very interesting to note that Hyderabad has two main things. One, the connection with young people, colleges, universities. And second, they have a very strong connection with the government. The government itself has given Hyderabad the properties, very well known, the property in which Shanti Sarova sits in, absolutely free of charge. The property in which they've built their main center, completely free of charge. And these are well-located plots right in the heart of the city. Um, and this obviously has a connection with um, Chandra Babu Naidu, who used to be the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, who had a close connection with the BKs and still does. But the BKs are very well known, especially within the government circles. And having met two of their senior diplomats towards the end, the need very much is the need to address spiritual development. They have all the other levels of development, mental, physical, emotional, but they now recognizing the need for spiritual development. And this is where the Brahma Kumaris are coming into play. So a new level of service beginning there and all of you on behalf of Sister Kuldeep, are warmly invited. Hyderabad is soon to become an international airport um, and definitely an international presence there will have a profound effect on service. But from my own part of this whole journey, being involved in service really helps to fine tune what it means and what is needed to really bring about success. Because when we look into mainstream service, there are so many organizations on the one hand that do very good charitable work, that you know help people, that run seminars as the BKs run seminars. And yet, I found myself reflecting quite a lot, what makes us different? And this, I feel, is probably one of the main key things that, if this was developed, would truly bring the Brahma Kumaris onto the world stage in a, in a big way. Because we have two ingredients 
that separate us from mainstream organizations um, in a very practical way. And these particular ingredients, when they're developed, not only on a personal spiritual level, but on a practical level too, provide a very powerful force for us to take Baba's message across. Do you know what these two ingredients could be? Knowledge of the soul and the supreme soul. Mm -hmm. You'd find elements of knowledge across all organizations too. Yes, maybe not to the same clarity as here. Love and peace. The Christians preach that, preach that. Holy Cross colleges preach that. Yes, love and peace. It's not the differentiating factor there. This isn't a religion. Yes, it's not a religion. We know it's not a religion, but outside they don't know it's not a religion. Something that's two aspects that are clearly identifiable. One is purity, and the second thing? <laughs> yes, most organizations out there claim to have peace too, preach peace too. People of all ages study here, yes, that's true. They do so in other organizations too. Silence, yes. The Baha'is preach silence too. <laughs> Giving vibrations, yes. One thing that underpins everything you've just said. Baba. Hmm? Baba's power. Um, if we were to define service when I'm, and often the example that came to my mind was Daddy Janky. We have the good fortune because I'm based in Oxford at Baba's retreat center in Oxford. And so there is the good fortune to have Daddy's company on a very frequent basis. And the one thing that Daddy always talks about is that how much she spends 90% of her time inside and 10% of her time outside just 10% of her time in service. And yet, if we were to look at her from the outside, she spends 90% of her time outside, and she barely has 10% of her time inside. And I remember asking Daddy, what's the key? What are you talking about? Because on, the, on a very superficial level, when we were to look at you, it's actually the opposite. And yet you're telling us that you spend 90% of your time inside. What's the difference? Um, and one particular statement that Daddy shared with me that had a profound impact on me and completely helped me to change my perspective on service was that she mentioned that service is about developing an attitude of tapasya. Service is merged in an attitude of tapasya. And when I heard that particular statement, I immediately became aware of how when we're on the field of service, how much our attitude is influenced by giving. Hmm? Where we feel we have to be it give others gyan, give others, um, you know, our company, enlighten others, share with others. Um, bring others closer to Baba's home. How much of our attitude is influenced by giving rather than actually the being? Mm? And one of my own observations of Daddy has been that she's never lost her royalty in service. I'd remember a sister from, I don't know where it was, Hong Kong, China, coming to Daddy one time and absolutely crying her eyes out in front of Daddy. And I was translating for Daddy at that point, 
And the sister had said, I can't do service where I am. It's just so hard and I so much want to do Baba's service, but I can't do Baba's service and how is it going to happen? And she was crying in front of Daddy and Daddy made her quiet. And Daddy said to her, don't worry about not being able to do service. Just focus on your efforts, focus on your tapasya, take this time as a time in drama that's been given to you to truly become what Baba wants you to become. Because she says, in the early days, we never used to run after service. The 14 years of tapasya that they spent with Baba meant that as soon as they came out of the furnace and actually stepped onto the field of service, service would come running to them. Situations, people would come in front of them. They simply had to respond in the way that Baba had asked them to respond. And then I remember asking Daddy the question, well, what about the directions that Baba would give you in the Murlis? Because often we hear in the Sakkar Murlis, Baba giving some very clear directions for service. How would you approach that? Would you feel that you would have to go out and do something? And Daddy said, no. Daddy said, yes, there would be a deep, deep desire that whatever Baba had said, we needed to fulfill that. That was the starting point in service. That whatever it is that Baba wanted me to do, let me make myself available and be an instrument to do that. And she said that was the bhavna that they ground deep inside them. And all they did was kept an aim. And often, Daddy would say, that because of that bhavna, because of that aim, the right people would come in front of them, the right situations would come in front of them. They never had to run after service. And this was an aspect that attracted me a lot, a lot. A whole aspect of maintaining my personal dignity and royalty in service. Because people in the world outside, organizations in the world outside, it's what makes us different from them. It's our expression that makes us different from Lockheed people out there. We're not just social workers, um, but we're spiritual social workers. It has a very different meaning. So coming back to these two elements, the power of purity and the power of Baba, the power of Baba's remembrance. And reflecting on these things, one of my first observations was that when I was able to define service as developing an attitude of tapasya, suddenly everything became easy. Because often, um, especially if you are in a situation where maybe you're in Baba's centers and to a certain extent have a responsibility, obviously wherever we are, we want to share Baba's message. Um, Sometimes situations can happen, sometimes it can feel like nothing's happening. Or if something's happening, it's moving very slowly. And in those times, what do you do? Rather than let thoughts of maybe weak thoughts or thoughts of hopelessness take over, the interesting thing is to shift right back into this attitude of tapasya, where everything is in my hands. And what is underpinning this attitude of tapasya is this power of purity and the power of Baba's remembrance. Because ultimately, service has nothing to do with giving gyan. Service has nothing to do with training seminars, with you know our public facing. It's got to do with relationships. And the energy that we share in relationships. Baba has often told us in Murli's that Baba himself came and he revealed himself to his children. And now it's our turn to reveal him to the world. That's the pattern. It's not that God is going to reveal himself to the world. He's done it to us directly. And now it's our responsibility to do that to the world. And this is why picking up on Baba's last morally where Baba very much emphasized the need for our fortune to reflect through our face and through our behavior. Why? Because that is how Baba is going to ultimately be revealed.
And you know, the interesting thing is, is obviously when you're on the field of service, you know, it's 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 a learning field. It's a wonderful opportunity for learning. It's a wonderful opportunity to see where the soul's strengths are, the soul's specialities are, and also where the soul needs to maybe polish up a bit and maybe refine itself a bit. And what's interesting in this whole area of experience, personal experience, is more and more this is what people are now needing. People are now tired of listening to words. You know, too many words now, and the intellect can't cope with it. People's minds and people's hearts want to be refreshed. They want an experience. And just very recently, a situation that occurred, it was just in Hyderabad. I just finished a seminar um, or a, um, a lecture at one of the colleges and a young girl approached me and she started crying and she said can I ask you please just once to call me daughter in Hindi the word is beti yeah? and she was asking me to call her please call me your daughter and she was absolutely sobbing her eyes out and she went on to explain that her parents weren't there, she was alone. And she felt extremely vulnerable because where she was working, there's a lot of pressure of work, a lot of negativity. And I immediately, obviously my immediate response was that you're not my daughter, you're God's daughter. No? And you know, we're brothers and sisters and you know, and then connecting her. But as I was leaving that particular arena, I thought to myself, have I accumulated enough of Baba's power inside of me, enough of the power of Baba's love and Baba's peace inside of me, that whoever comes in front of me at the end, I'm able to give that donation to them. They're able to experience that same level from me. That was what that particular situation prompted me to start thinking about how much have I accumulated in terms of my experience of the power of peace, the power of purity, and the power of Baba's love. Because at the end of the day, when a soul like that comes, wanting peace and wanting love, no words can give that experience. Mm. How do we get that from Baba? We get that from Baba through Baba's drishti. Mm. Why is it that when Baba comes, what we most want, apart from Baba's Murali, is Baba's Drishti, even on the path of Bhakti, the whole memorial of Drishti. This is why they say, you know, Devtai ka Darshan. When they talk about Darshan, Darshan means a glimpse, a vision. They want to go and get a glimpse of the deities. Such is the power of Drishti that we now develop at the confluence age and you know towards the final scenes it's this particular power that is going to come into play and our experience the experience and the power of the soul is going to be reflected through the windows of the eyes not through the mouth and so this was one of the first thoughts if you like in the stimuluses that I began to receive what does it mean to now give the course of giving an experience? And in this level of service, there is no room for deception. Because on the level of service where we share gyan, where we are explaining things, there is a slight illusion accompanied with that level of service because it's very easy to understand something. Often our level of understanding and our level of practice are actually two very different levels. To the extent we understand Baba's knowledge, to the extent we practice Baba's knowledge, and to the extent that we've imbibed Baba's knowledge, each of these three levels have quite a difference between them. Am I right? Yeah. 
there's a massive difference, if not quite a bit, between each of these differences. And on the level of just understanding knowledge and relating what you understand, it's quite deceptive because often the illusion that ac accompanies the fact that I'm able to understand something easily means that I'm there. Hmm? Often accompanying something that you understand is a level of intoxication. Oh, I understand it. I get it. Yeah, that's it. I get it. But it doesn't mean you're there. Hmm? It doesn't mean you've practically imbibed it. It doesn't mean that it's become a practical power in your life. Sustained realization over a period of time, when it becomes a practical dharana, when truly all vo voices of weakness or of the past have finished, that is real power. And this level of service that we're still stuck at, where we're sharing what we understand, that is touching people's intellects. And that is what leads to individuals being impressed with us. And of course, the wonderful thing about service is it's great when they're impressed with us, you know, our own egos are fed, um, and we feel that we've done something. Um, and that's wonderful. But it's, it's touched here. But how much has it touched the heart for their voice to truly emerge, for them to say what Baba said in the last Murali, that this is the right thing. They should turn around and say to us, you are the right people. You are the ones who are going to reveal. How much have I been able to touch their hearts to that extent? Mm -hmm. And, of course, on the level of being impressed, um, their egos are fed, our egos are fed. And this is, let me s I mean, this is a natural part of the journey of service. You know, it's, you, you don't enter the field of service and, and you're not there immediately. You go through these steps and, and what I'm sharing is just my own observation of these steps where at some point in my, in my, on, on, on my service field and in my relationships, I was seeing that people were being impressed. But that's where it was stopping and I thought, well, I don't feel that I'm really doing the service, the kind of service that Baba would want me to do. It's not honest service. Where I'm still taking a commission from service, that's not honest service. Taking a commission from service means feeding my ego from the service I do. And that was one area that I felt that that really from my heart was not honest service. And it was that that prompted me to explore a deeper level to turn back to Baba and say, okay, now where do we go now? And so these are just, if you like, markers on the way, you know, we can choose to either remain at that level and continue to be fed at that level, or we can choose to see them as a signal and go deeper and deepen our level of tapasya to truly, truly break that ego. Because on the service field, if there is anything that creates limits um, in our areas of service, it's the whole element of our ego. It's our ego that very much prevents our attitude from not remaining in attitude of tapasya, not remaining in attitude of introversion, not remaining in attitude of tension. It's our ego that takes us outside, that makes us start looking at others, that makes us start wanting to get in a very subtle way to take commission from service. It's our ego that takes us out there and makes us action conscious. Hmm? One of the m other subtle deceptions in service is the whole area of action consciousness. Because karma brings its own fruit. It has to. It's the law. Whatever I do, I will receive a return for that. But that return is only temporary if it's done from this consciousness, if it's fed through my ego. It's a very temporary return. 
And the more service I continue to do, the more my ego will be fed, I feel. But the moment that service is taken away from me, what was today's blessing? Did you all hear Baba's blessing from this morning? A very powerful reminder that if you don't maybe receive those opportunities in service, what's the real service? The service of our dharana, the service of our remembrance. Hmm? But the moment we get involved in service, and that service is taken away from us, what do I feel? If there is any sense of loss, any sense of pain, any sense of emptiness, then understand that all the service I've been doing up until now has actually been of very little value. Hmm? And so a clear, very clear indication that moving beyond the pull of action is extremely important. And this is one of the first elements I felt in terms of maintaining my royalty in service. Not being pulled by actions. Yes, we have to do what we have to do. We have to enable things to happen, but not lose our sense of dignity and royalty in that. Um, that equals R. I'm just, I'm just kind of coming off track before I come back on track again. One time a small group of us had gone to Daddy Kulsa and asked Daddy, um, you know, we do all this and we have so much service and all of this, but you know, why is it that Bob's remembrance it doesn't stay? And Daddy gave a very simple answer. You know, she said, there's nothing majorly wrong with you. It's just that you've made service your priority and not Baba. It's as simple as that. You know, when I write yes, in the evenings, when I write the things to do list for tomorrow, what do I put, put first? My ironing, my washing, or do I put Baba first? On my list of my priority list, what's the first thing? And this is a conscious thing. I even found myself doing this um, yesterday or this morning, you know, when I'm thinking, okay, I've got to get this, this, this done in a day. And then at Amrit Vela, I was reminded, well, actually, this is what you need to pay attention to during the day. Baba's remembrance. The rest will follow. Hmm? And it's this priority is that we've got to make Baba the priority in a day. It's as simple as that. And it was, it was such a relief to hear Daddy say that, that it completely reshifted the order of, of energies in a day. And I guess this for me has been the first step forward, is that on an everyday, let me make Baba and Baba's remembrance and that attention to that a priority. It's as simple as that. Whatever I make a priority, my attention will be drawn to. So, making Baba a priority. And this whole area of the power of Baba's remembrance and service helps the soul to stretch and truly move beyond its capacity from limited to the unlimited. Because often when there isn't that attention to remembrance, then the sense of I am responsible that feeling of responsibility that can take over whilst performing actions or whilst doing service, that feeling of responsibility makes me limited, puts a limit to my capacity. Hmm? Where when it gets to some a certain point on the level of service where I can't do any more or the pressure builds up and I feel I can't do any more. But the whole area of learning to make, from my own experience, making Baba a priority in my life, having that attention to remembrance, has given a very strong feeling that Baba is my support in service. And very much, and especially these last few days, a very deep feeling that every time I sit in Baba's remembrance or in any task, there's the feeling from Baba that Baba's saying, child, it's okay, I'm sitting here. I'm right next to you, 
I'm sitting here. I'll take care. And that very feeling of safety, of protection, of comfort, of Baba's presence helps the soul to step outside these parameters of these kind of thoughts that lock a soul in its own limit limitations. And truly, when we're able to step outside this box of I feel responsible, Baba can do his magic. Because ultimately it is Baba's task. And you know what comes to mind is is asking Daddy Janking the question. Is it true that whatever situation that comes in front of you, be it on the field of service, on any level, you will only, the only, a situation will only come in front of you according to your capacity? Is that true? And do you know what Daddy's answer was? No. She said no. She said otherwise there would be no need for God. And it's true. You know, we work in our limitations. Baba's come to make us unlimited. And it's with his help, his power, that we step out of the limits. Because it's ultimately, it's his power that's going to get it done. My energy will take me so far in service. But Baba's energy takes it even further. And this is another observation from Daddy, that she never uses her own energy. That he never expends her own energy. She's always, the feeling you get is she's working of Baba's power, of a different energy. And this is a very, for me, has been a, a very important thing to, to develop in my efforts. Learning the art of using Baba's power in my actions and in my service. And so this whole area of Baba's remembrance is, is crucial to stepping out of the limits. Because, you know, when we work in our limits, it's great, it's comfortable, it's rewarding to a certain extent, but we're just experiencing a drop. There's an ocean to be experienced, and we're just happy with just a little drop. You know, one little drop of something, and oh, wow, I'm great, I feel good, this is fantastic. And we completely miss out on an ocean of experience. So really just stepping out of the limited into the unlimited. That's the whole area of the power of Baba's remembrance. And the second element, the power of purity. Um, really, both legs are needed in service. Have you ever tried hopping on one leg? How far does that get you? You need two legs to walk. And truly, um, the power of purity is something I'm just beginning to actually understand what that means on the field of service, on the field of my efforts and my actions, especially because where the power of God's remembrance is very much me and my relationship with Baba, drawing Baba's power, molding myself to receive from Baba, because it's not that Baba's not giving, Baba's always giving, but it's just that sometimes I move out of Baba's orbit. I stop receiving. And it's learning the art of remaining in a state in which I can always absorb Baba's power. I can mold myself through developing that attitude of tapasya in such a way that that energy connection is always open. But what keeps that energy connection open, what enables me to remain within the orbit of Papa's energy is very much underpinned through developing the power of purity. And one of the first things that came to my mind, I remember before leaving London saying to Daddy that for all these years I've been moving along to a large extent on the level of faith that you have had in me. Daddy, the daddies, the seniors can often see things in us that we can't see. Baba sees things in us that of course we can't see. Baba is Baba. And I've been to a large extent and percentage moving along on the basis of your faith in me and Baba's faith in me. And because of your faith in me, that's given me faith in myself. 
Mm? You've given me tasks to do. You've put me on the field of service. Baba's given me opportunities. And because I feel that Baba has faith in me, that gives me the courage to say Haji. Yeah? But now I feel very much that I'm entering a phase um, and I see this not only on a personal level, but I see this on an organizational level. I see this on a world service level too. That we're now entering a faith where I need to develop that same sense of belief in myself to the same extent that Baba and Daddy have for me. And that experience of my original, eternal, ever pure form where truly I have accepted my self-respect that yes I am this elevated this pure this Brahmin who is going to become a deity without a doubt an aspect this for me is where the whole aspect of staying pure. The word that comes to mind in Hindi, my swadharm. Swadharm means the original religion of the self. Mm. Remaining connected to my swadharm. That is what the power, where for me very much the power of purity stems from. Because when there isn't that level of faith deeply in oneself and yes this is what our journey is about too you know then what do we experience on the field of service weak thoughts thoughts of self-doubt there are little voices that come up and that say can I do this is this possible maybe I'm not meant to do this I can't it's too much I can't carry on now hmm? And it's those voices of self-doubt, it's those voices of our journey and the cycle in between that come to the surface. And then it's very hard, you know, when those voices interfere in service, how can I truly call myself Baba's instrument? How can I truly be an instrument? An instrument is an instrument that's clean, that's plain that has no agendas and no personal issues and no personal opinions in between. Literally, it's an instrument that Baba can just pick up and play at any time, at any place, anywhere, anyhow. No questions, no doubts, no arms, no buts, no ifs in between. And my own question inside is, to what extent have I truly developed that sense of faith in myself where Baba's voice is my voice. There is no difference between the voice that Baba has for me and the voice that I have for myself. And when there is no difference between these two voices, I naturally become an instrument. And no need for me to think about doing service. Um, no need for me to um, um, use my intellect. I feel truly when that level of faith develops in a self, that's the kind of faith that enables Baba to move the intellect wherever it needs to be moved. Because when that intellect develops that kind of a faith, it becomes extremely peaceful and quiet. And one of Mama's slogans, which I take to heart very deeply that Daddy often shares with us, is the slogan that hukum hi hukum chalarai. Hmm? It's the order that is making me move. That is for me one of the highest states of what it truly means to be an instrument that there is nothing else in between a plain intellect a peaceful intellect a quiet intellect that is ready surrendered at God's feet 
just like Hanuman would travel, you know, in Bhakti. They have the stories of Hanuman who would all the service and then he would finally come. And what's his uh, memorial? He would sit at the shoes. Or he would sit at God's feet and say, what next? And that's the level of intellect that I want to develop. And that for me um, is, is very much, I feel, what Baba's Murali's, especially what Baba's Murali's from the beginning of the season have been highlighting that Baba's throwing it all back into our lap and saying, Swaman, remain in your self-respect. Because we all have the power of Baba's love inside us. We do. But where we fall short is the whole aspect of deep, deep faith in the self in the same way that Baba has for us. And when both of these, when this power of purity... Uh, the power of my own purity, my own self-respect, of my swadharm, accompanied with the power of Baba's remembrance, the fortress of Baba's remembrance, makes us totally invincible on the field of service and puts us in a very powerful position to influence change on a very deep level. Mm. Because our responsibility as ancestor souls is not to get the job done, but is also to become master removers of sorrow and master bestowers of happiness. And that's a much, much higher and more profound level of service than just to give a lecture and just to share a few words. But through our example, through our vibrations, through our experience, to truly awaken a soul's mind and heart to Baba's love and Baba's peace. And the curtain is about to open. I'm just looking at service on every level. What Baba's been talking about in the Sakar Murlis, it's happening, and it's happening all of its own accord. Let me tell you, we're not doing, we're hardly doing anything to get the machinery running. It's now drama time is speeding up and service is going to happen, it's fixed. But that's the race. Am I keeping up with the race or am I lagging behind? Is my stage up to it or is it lagging behind? Because when that curtain opens, am I ready to face the world? What is the quality of my stage? And then, by that time, it's too late. Whoever I am, whatever I am, that's it. Baba said to us, the too late board hasn't gone up yet. There's still time. And in that time, there's an opportunity to go fast. Mm -hmm. Because the thing with effort is that we need sustained effort over a period of time. It's very hard to suddenly start cramming at the time of an exam. You can't cram at the time of an exam. At the time of an exam, you've got to give an exam. You've got to answer the question. And it's whatever you have inside, that's all that's going to come out. And so sustained effort over a period of time, it's truly going to enable us to be able to then stand on that world stage and keep our heads held up high and say, yes, Baba, Haji, from the heart, in a very big way. So, just sharing a few thoughts of what truly, from my own observations, what success is in service. And um, I just want to share one more thing. Daddy had sat with a group of um, senior instruments about a year ago and I had the good fortune to translate two hours worth of um, solid input, direct focused input Daddy was giving these instruments. And Daddy was talking about the power of truth in service and how she was saying that now has come a time 
where Baba wants such instrument children to be able to share knowledge and share experience the way Baba shares it. Using the same words that Baba uses. She says we use 10, 20 words now, but now has come a time in service where just two words need to unlock someone's intellect. Now just imagine, it's very easy to go into expansion about something, but not so easy to condense all that expansion into an essence. And so just imagine how much power two words need to have for the arrow to hit the target. And that was something that I was left with, was that that's the power, internal power of truth, truly of a very deep and clean heart, that I need to go very, very deep and remove all level of alloy from inside, any level of mixture that remains inside, to be able to allow the power of my original form my original qualities to impact through my words. So I'll stop there. It's nearing 12.30. If there are any questions, anybody else would like to share something? Anyone else has an experience? Was that clear? It was kind of to going back and forth, but this is now the area. So shall we finish with some meditation? <laughs>